Hello, Mike. Hi, Mike. I'm hi. Hi, Mike. It's uh, Nate Woodring, and I have. Uh, hi, Pat. Nate. How are you? I'm doing well. And how are you doing? Not bad. I also have with me today uh, Justin, Pat, and I'm Ed. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey, how are you, Mike? How are you? And uh, so, kind of how I, I see this going, I know we don't have a lot of time, and uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and I have Pat and Justin here, and, and they're my more technical guys, and I'm going to go ahead and let them kind of lead and kind of give you the, the capabilities that we have, and hopefully they can answer any questions that you have about our, uh, about our product. That sounds great. I, I wish I had more time, too. This was the only open slot I had for a couple of weeks, so... Uh... You know, if you know if I see stuff that's interesting, which I'm kind of guessing I will, then we we can set up a longer one if we need it. Perfect, sounds great. So uh, with with that, I'll let uh, Pat go ahead and uh, take it over. <clears throat> so yeah, Mike, just to uh, you know, Nate did inform me about your background, so this is going to be a much more uh, to the point discussion. You know, not a sales <laughs> pitch to a company. It's going to be a hey, tech guy, here's what we're doing. Here's the differentiators and the value proposition. That sounds great. That's what I need. <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, yeah, to preface what we're doing from a technical standpoint, so what our company did, our main differentiator, is traditional website analytics, what they're doing, whether it's Google, Omniture, um, what they're doing is a web log's creating a record from the transition from a page to page. So you basically have quantitative analysis to know, you know, when people left the page, when they entered, and then they'll also be recording the key actions that happen. So the big difference from our software is um, we're storing about a thousand times that much information and what's relevant there, what that includes is it's, um, the information someone is submitting in a search bar before making their actual selection. We have each of these individual uh, keystrokes and entries as its own searchable, queryable data point. So if you wanted to look through and, uh, for instance, focus on all the people who wrote the word red rum in your search field, then abandoned afterwards, you'd be able to do that query and separate that information. Okay, so um, so um, you're not selling the search engine, you're selling analytics that go behind the search engine. Correct. We, we have a search engine, it's a separate discussion on that as well, but what we're selling is the analytics to dig deeper into high missed opportunities or the high value portions of your site, essentially. And, yeah. And could, have you done any work to integrate that with other search engines, or do, does it just now work with your own at the moment? Well, it works. Um, when you say these search engines, are, we're creating the data source currently. From what we're doing on the analytics, we're creating the data source. Um, so we're creating a web log and an action log of all the actions on the site. So you're, you're basically asking whether or not we can export that information and make it queryable. Now, is, is that the question, Mike? Or? No, I'm, I guess I'm asking... Um, if I wanted to apply that analytics to Indeca, for example, for, for a client who's using that search engine, can I, can I easily do that or do I just have to put together an export of the keyword log or what, how would I integrate it with a different search engine? Yeah, you'd have to integrate it. They don't have the raw data stored. So what we, what we have from a tactical standpoint, we have a traditional log that's basically transitional page to page that factors in the environmental variables when a page loads. So that's going to line up to what companies are already using in most cases. You know, so okay. uh, we also have a separate log, what we call the action web log, that specifically shows you know the different points of the mouse the movement points where information was entered, different text selection. And that's all, that's all lined by session. So you can search through your you know, top layer log that's traditional and dig deep into your behavior log to line up that data. So they all would right. just need, so it is, uh, it is definitely syncable by session and by impression ID in that case. Okay, and so what would the, Tell me, tell me what the typical usage would do, this would be for a client. What, what does a typical client do with what you've got? The typical use case, uh, the typical use case would be to you have your top level quantitative analytics you're already taking a look at for a company. You have particular segments. I brought up this glasses because we're speaking them right now about this to say uh, I want to know more information about something like when someone logs out of a password and they leave my site and come back what someone's typing into the search field. They would basically choose what their high value segment of traffic is to solve a problem. They'd take a much deeper look 
and be able to watch what they did in addition to the deep data. Once that problem solved, they would, they would potentially apply the microscope to a different portion of their site. That's kind of the workflow that we've learned makes the most sense, is to look at you know, the individual sessions and then get really deep into what your site's pain points are. All right, and uh, have you applied this only to external sites, or have you ever tried applying it to an intranet? As far, Justin, if you, as far as I know, we've had quite a few intranet requests. We haven't, uh, Justin, have you tried that? <laughs> you wanna, if I wanna no, we that. really haven't. Everything we've done to date has really been uh, on the internet, on external publicly available websites. And is there a reason, uh, is there a reason that it wouldn't work on the internet? Is it just that you haven't done it, or do you think that some of what you're bringing to the party w might not really apply? If the use case is right, it definitely could apply. We haven't really tested it because we haven't had as many requests or demand uh, as we would or have had for you know general use cases on the uh, publicly available internet. But with that said, the the data communication could be the exact same. So there's no reason to say that it definitely would not work. All right. All right. That, that was the background I needed. Now, now you can keep, keep rolling. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, to keep it uh, to the point about mobile is, you know, mo most companies, too, you talk about use cases. No one's really figured out mobile yet, particularly on the usability perspective. So that's most of the requests we get are, you know, they might know their analytics and KPIs for their general traffic, but mobile is still its own animal. So we do recreate that in its entirety from zooming, from, you know, movements, finger pinches, et cetera. And it's relevant to know, and I think you get this from the behavior end, but aside from being able to watch this, if you identify a problem when you watch it, you can search through as data points to understand how many other people created the same problem, which is the big differentiator from traditional, you know, user testing is you do it on a few fixed cases. You can't search through your records and say, okay, I'm, I'm not going to look at a million videos. I'm going to look at 10. I noticed a potential problem. Let me search through my history and see how much of a problem that really is. So that's just a preface to the mobile as well as, you know, traditional use case and how it can supplement what people are currently doing. So aside from, aside from the raw capability, you know, um, to create, basically, to store as well as replay the entire customer experience, we also have integrated into our workflow a, a, a couple particular modules that we noticed, you know, were high in demand. Um, the, two, the two things we're looking at is from a segmentation standpoint, you can choose any filters or criteria to watch only those particular records. And, and we also, for each in particular customer, we're creating a complete history from a customer to customer view where you can go back and forth from one customer sessions individually and then basically choose your tags and the KPIs relevant for your company. You know? So you can look through history based on revenue, based on any actions that happen on the site. On the other, what we're gearing towards, I know Nate told you we're doing a bit of a, a reboot to simplify things from raw capabilities, is uh, the biggest demand we've had is for sentiment analysis. We are the uh, exclusive solution, you know, to store what people type into contact forms, et cetera. So we have insurance companies that said, I'd love to know if someone's writing, you know, hey, I'm filing an insurance claim. I broke my leg. Delete, delete, delete. I actually broke my arm. You know, whether or not it's honesty for dispute resolution's sake, and uh, we've learned on a contact form, if someone says, I hate your company, et cetera, et cetera, we're storing that information and we're um, integrating the ability to search through happy and non-satisfied customers as a whole because, you know, we're labeling them based on aggregate information, based on a few uh, mainstream ways to measure that. So, how are, you, how are you doing the sentiment analysis? You're just doing word spotting from a dictionary? We're using another algorithm. Um, I don't... We're, we're using basically what people are already using out there with uh, when it comes to words, it, it, all based on keystrokes, if that's the main question there. So yeah, also, uh, just so you know, uh, I happen to be an expert in that area, and I've actually developed technology for another company that, that actually can be licensed fairly inexpensively that is much, much more accurate than that. And it's been trained on social media data, so I have a feeling it would work fairly well in your situation. Yeah, that's, that's great to know. I'm sure we can have a much deeper conversation aside from that. So, so yeah, the algorithm itself, our focus is more the, you know, aggregating the information so you can search through because people might want to look at a dissatisfied customer. So, 
on aside from that, I think what's relevant on your end, Mike, which we're, uh, I'll show you a direct uh, execution of our actual uh, module. Um, when we launched this product, we allowed companies to, within tagging, divine the value of every visit on their site. So if a company wanted to divine, for instance, someone adding to cart, someone who leaves, who comes, adds to a cart, and leaves 30 minutes later, I'm going to give them a particular value for every time that action executes. Uh, we learned that that's not what people want to hear. They do want very simple, you know, aggregated information. So what we're currently uh, polishing is giving a behavioral footprint for every single session to say that there's different value to measure the advertising results from someone who came to your site for five seconds versus 30 seconds and was actually interested. So we're, that's, uh, that's what we're gearing toward from a simplicity standpoint. If that, does, it, does that make sense to you from a uh, value yeah. proposition, Mike? Or? Yeah, it does. Do you have like standard pricing, or is it all um, is it all kind of bid, or how does it work? Well, our internal hard cost is data, and I think uh, our low our lowest level client right now is a seven fifty a month range with a two thousand setup cost. We launched on the market, you know, from what our competitors charge at a two hundred fifty k firm licensing standpoint, but. To be honest, I mean, we don't have the uh, we don't have the current internal resources to pull that off. It required too many meetings, so we're still pretty uh, flexible when it comes down to that. When we do a, we're planning on a relaunch in mid-August and basically take into account the fact that we've spoke to about we basically spoke to the head data guy at about 200 of the top you know 5,000 companies for the first time, and that's when we took a hard stop and we're changing our uh, changing our pitch based on the conclusion. But, but data is always going to be our hard cost internally. And if someone's doing this with billions of impressions a month, our price isn't going to go down with that. That's what they'll want to see. So. Okay. And on that note as well, Mike, on the productization, the big change we made internally was on the note of um, we had a lot of requests for demo requests from companies who said, you know, I want to try this now because you guys aren't established, obviously, from the uh, person we're switching from. So we've added the internal capability to... Uh, to create records based on instances. So if you get a million hits and you only want these records created for people who abandoned your site based off criteria, that's the big difference from a capability standpoint is we're trying to be able to offer low cost trials based on a small piece of traffic, you know, before you need it installed on your entire system. So. Any questions at this point, Mike, or do you want me to kind of uh, walk through? You can... No, keep, keep going. Uh, I'm finding it interesting, and I, I think I understand it. Great. So um, from a capability standpoint, one of our uh, big differentiators, you know, there's a, couple, uh, there's a couple companies doing things in a more, I guess you'd call a more preliminary way on the session replay. They're not storing all the information. Um, I don't know if this page is still up or not, but we have the unique ability to, in this case, if you wanted to spy on a particular segment of traffic, let's say you wanted to look at people who've already made 50 purchases in the past and you wanted to get a better idea of their usability. We have the ability to create this live and basically let a company monitor those. And uh, the three cases we saw of value there were if someone is closing the sale, if you're selling Ferraris on a site, and someone is talking about how much, and you're telling them about how great the speed is, you happen to monitor that high value customer and see that he's looking at security, you're going to naturally shift your pitch towards security. So it's basically, uh, the, the goal here is to integrate it with a chat module for companies to, be, to have much more discovery of you know, what the people are doing on the other side. So. Now, do you do you have um, do you have like a PowerPoint or something that walks through this that I could show somebody like m with your new pitch? Um, no, where I have I have a couple docs open. We'll have them in the next uh, in the next uh, two weeks. We should have that. We're basically right. polishing our product itself. Yeah, because I have a couple of folks that I think I'd like to show this to, and if they're interested, then I'd bring them in to have you guys talk to them. Let me ask you, Mike. Are there any comments from a uh, from a productization standpoint? Something that you see we're particularly missing, or something that we might have not stressed? Do you have any top level comments based off the discussion thus far? Well, I guess what I'm wondering is, um, I mean, are you pitching mainly to e-commerce companies? Is that where you're going? Because it's very simple for them to understand what the the uh, conversions are and to value them. Or do you think that the, are you using this more broadly? More broadly, currently, 
I'll, uh, more broadly and basically depending on the company, you know, my pitch is focused on what their pain points will be, which for someone financial, it's going to be dispute resolution usually to understand what people are doing, have a fixed record of everything that happens. And uh, yeah, really just adjusting in that regard. So. All right. Um, do you have any clients that are using it now that, you can, that you're allowed to discuss? No, we have about 25 clients thus far that are using our analytics creation. Um, none of them are large enterprise. We're in the pro we're in the process where about 30 to 40 companies are waiting on us to get back to them because we realize we didn't have the infrastructure to handle a lot of the requests, such as you said, the intranet, you know, integration, etc. So, mm -hmm. uh, not our highest our highest traffic client we currently have tracked is in you know the few million uh, few million unique page views a month range. But the ones right. we've been close on, you know, um, Dell was someone we were pretty close on, someone that we don't have a security that uh, was real close on except for the need to see, you know, most of the people basically wanted a free trial use case or they wanted a lot more paperwork that we realized we need to take a step back and create. So. All right. And uh, so, so one of the things that... Um, Nate was talking about is that you guys have had other kind of iterations of things that you've done that you've pivoted away from and one of them that he talked about was that there was um, a database that you have of like you know a tremendous number of, of web pages that you've crawled and I'm, I'm, I mean is that an asset that you're still maintaining even if you're not monetizing it right now? Yeah, it's an asset we're maintaining. We've just uh, realized the. I'll, I'll I'll give you a quick run through if that's what the request is, Mike. You give me one second to pull up a couple links. So, sure. So from a capability standpoint, what we did is uh, we basically uh, got pretty deep into the search engine world. We ran uh, we ran robots on Google, being a few of the large search engines, and we downloaded a we downloaded a large file of every uh, every internet site currently active, every domain active. So what we did is we compared it directly with Google's. What we did is we grabbed a thousand random domains out of everyone registered and compared to how many Google had indexed. This was about two years ago. And we got a pretty good estimate that they had 22 million out of the, I believe at the time, 170 million total. So we noticed this with all the search engines, you know, was that they had, obviously they have all the relevant links, that's not a debate, but they were missing a lot of the smaller links who just either were purposely avoiding being indexed or uh, just wasn't relevant because they didn't know how to make their case. So, what we created was a few. I'm going to show you one example here. We created a few different um, link farms, so to speak, search engines that included a data set of approximately 100 million unique domains. And we had this all in the database. That uh, this site here is an example of about 50 different ones that we created that come up with a lot of correlations, such as. If you wanted to see sites that are, in this case, using the word sports at least four times within the text, we could do internet-wide searches for that kind of data. So what we learned here, we launched this on the premise of, you know, having access from an API or from another, you know, unified source, companies having access to the entire internet and coming up with the algorithms by request, such as, I want to know my company, I want to search through how many people are using, like we said, a text term this many times across the internet. But uh, the feedback we got is that no one we spoke to really cared about the entire internet. Their only real uh, need was for their particular customers. So what we have from a productization standpoint is we are doing general tracking. If you want to look at your top few competitors as a company on the competitive intelligence standpoint, and we monitor the increases and decreases of traffic as well as any changes within their source code at the same time to make basically um, top level understanding that if you have 10 million new Facebook likes this month and you have an increase in traffic, there's usually a correlation. Or if you know, and anything that you can detect from the source code correlating it for uh, every website. Does that make sense on the, uh, at least on, I know these things we could dig into for hours and hours, but from a top level understanding, Mike? It does. The th I guess the thing I'm wondering is, um, what kind of analysis did you do on the pages besides um, okay, so you index, so you crawled them, you index them. Do you know how many domains you have? It's approximately 180 million. 180 I've been there million. a couple weeks. Yeah. All right. And how does it uh, how does it compare to what people can get from OpenCrawl? I'm so, I'm not familiar with uh, OpenCrawl in particular. 
Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, um, let's see. So you've got the database. You've got that. Um, and and um, what kind of data can people get out of what you've crawled? Well, all we've what we've created, I guess, uh, the only queries we've done globally thus far, here's one example, is we did a search for, you know, SEO keywords are one thing, but for companies who don't SEO keywords, we came with the determination that text used within the text may be more relevant for all the people who don't have SEO tags. So here we have a collection of all the words used, I believe, at least four times within the text, and that's how we classify um, different niches or different companies you know, to know uh, if that makes sense. That's, uh, that's the only example that we've executed to the point of creating websites around it and having these each be their own unique. But okay. aside from that, it's really been, every company I've spoke to has such different, you know, KPIs in that regard. They all want to know different things. So we're focused more on letting them search and telling us what they want, essentially, as opposed to okay. more, you know, broad level trending. So. All right. All right. Have you applied any text analytics to any of the data that you've got? Uh, now, Justin, have you done anything on your end? I don't know where. Any text analytics to the domains in the database? Yeah. Uh, nothing specific outside of what Patrick already kind of showed you on the front end of querying domains across the Internet that, have, that use specific terms, you know, at least four times on a specific page. Outside of that, nothing uh, that I can think of offhand. Okay. All right. But yeah, and I guess here's an example of, you know, what's been requested by a lot of companies who, I don't, are you familiar with Alexa by chance, Mike? Yeah, for sure. So, so obviously you know a lot about it. So that whole world, you know, we're taking Alexa, Quantcast, a few other measurements and taking an average. We, we've thrown a couple other into our algorithm, but so many companies have never heard of Alexa. Traffic ranks the biggest thing they wanted, taking in a few other, you know, accounts. And uh, the social media stuff, that's pretty ho-hum these days page load speed, speed percentage, so um, we have, what we do is create default dashboards depending on the request, but uh, we've, we've went away from it because internally we just haven't been able to handle, you know, polishing both products, so to speak, and our pitch is um, someone unlike you, Mike, it's, they've, they've all been getting confused. They think that we're storing these video analytics for every site on the internet, and that's caused quite a, uh, quite a difficulty in the follow-up for us, so that's why we've kind of veered away as a way, but we understand the value more for big data and big business long term, so. Okay. All right, and do you have like a success story of one customer that how they used it and what they got out of it that you can, that you could just walk me through? Um, are you talking about the analytics or the competitive intelligence? Yeah, uh, the, the, the original product. Yeah, sure. Let me know. Yeah, this is. Um, I realize it's a mistake. We have for financial institutions, we have NDA signed for everyone, our first, you know, 20 clients, but we've recreated scenarios of basically what their problem point was. We've created our own sites to explain them. So, mm -hmm. the one scenario, so to keep it simple, it's a uh, bank that's biggest request to us was understanding wealth management. They, their biggest goal was to upsell wealth management clients and their biggest interest point was if they could segment them to a higher success rate. So basically they want to know who's worth upselling to get a conclusion. So what we did in their case is on a form on their particular site that you fill in the, uh, someone chooses the financial goal of basically what they have to invest. We created, uh, we took a look at a few people filling this out and we saw a lot of people are choosing a higher value than choosing a lower value afterwards. So what we did is we uh, automatically segmented each of those customers as a higher upsell percentage. Because uh, common sense wise, if you're at a restaurant and you order a burger for $20, you change your mind and you order a sandwich for 10, there's a pretty good idea that you have $20 in your pocket for making the additional choice. Right. So that's one example of, you know, um, we created a custom dash, this is I believe uh, pretty similar. Um, we created custom within our analytics. so you can actually see what someone fills in in those cases as well. They wanted a footprint of what people filled in on every form once we basically were able to segment that to understand other discovery in that end, if that makes sense in some regards. So. Okay. So that's just one case of, you know, because usually you don't know when people type in information and make their choices of one way that's applicable to solve a problem. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, we're about out of time. This was very interesting. Um, 
I would definitely be interested in seeing, you know, your, uh, you know, like a PowerPoint pitch, you know, maybe one that has like a case study or something and, and something that just walks through what the different capabilities are that you're, that you're going forward with. Um, I'd be very interested in understanding uh, more about that because I'd like to, um, I'd like to talk to a couple of people about it and see if they're interested in getting a demo. Great. Yeah, I uh, I really appreciate it. I understand the uh, Nate. If you want to go ahead with um. Yeah. Thank Thank you, Mike. We appreciate your time. Um, you know, I'm not sure uh, what your availability is like. I know that we uh, have a client we need to go see in New York in the middle of uh, August. I don't know if uh, you have any time to sit down and. I know there's a couple of things we're working on, and if you you had a couple of minutes, we'd love to pick your brain. Uh, there's one week that I'm on vacation in August, the week of the 12th. Okay. I don't know if it's the week that you're doing it, but uh, I probably have time other weeks in August, just depending on what I've got scheduled. Definitely, and we're we're still trying to work that out. So uh, I'll we'll uh, get that finalized, and then uh, reach out to you, and and, and hopefully we can uh, find a time that's uh, we can both work with. That sounds great. Awesome. Well, thanks, Mike. Mike. I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Pat. I was going to ask, do you know I'm looking at my calendar when we'll be there? Mike, is that the week ending the 12th? The 12th um, is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at August here. The 12th is, um, the week before that is when we're going to be there. You know, it's a couple larger clients we're trying to close in that regard. Um, it'd be basically the 5th to the 9th would be the best window. And like you yeah, said, I'd so, love to hear more. If that yeah, I'm here, I'm here that week. So yeah, that would be great. Uh, we'd want to reach out to you, and you know, the biggest thing we're trying to get here, Mike, from who we're speaking to on the industry expert perspective, is aside from our final, uh, our final, you know, we're going to have finalized PowerPoints at that time, but to obviously get as much relevant feedback as possible to learn what we don't know. You know, that's our biggest uh, biggest hurdle we've run across is the enterprise etiquette when it comes down to sales and simplicity and kind of how that whole flow works. So. All right, probably the sixth or the seventh would be the best day for me. Can we throw the, the seventh would be great for us. Um, the seventh, okay. I need to. Would you be available for lunch that day, Mike? Uh, probably not lunch, but I could do something either later in the afternoon, or I, m I might even be able to do dinner if you wanted to do that. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna have. Uh, we're gonna send out an email the next couple days for the seventh. Give you a couple options time-wise, and hopefully have a more uh, constructive conversation in person. That and sounds before great. then, we'll send you everything we can uh, from firm documentation. I appreciate that. I got to run to my next meeting, but I appreciate the time. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike. Okay, thank, thank you, Mike. Guys. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Mm, bye. Bye. Uh.